During the period of 20 February to 20 March, the United Nations Operation Killer continues in the face of weakening enemy resistance and the annual torrential rains. In the western sector, UN forces have reached the Han River, while in the central sector, they have driven north of Wanju to the vicinity of Chepyong. On 12 March, Allied troops slam across the Han 15 miles east of Seoul. The attack cuts red supply and communication lines to the city, and on 13 March, the communists abandon Seoul without firing a shot. With our recapture of the capital city, enemy forces start a general withdrawal on all fronts, offering only token resistance with rear guard elements. UN units in the central sector push beyond Han Chan and threaten the important red supply base of Chunshan. By 20 March, UN forces are closely massed across Korea in a general line 15 or 20 miles from the 38th parallel and continue their advance along all fronts. During the first week of Operation Killer, constant rains and the annual spring thaws produce quagmire conditions, which do more to impede advancing UN columns than spotty red resistance. First Cavalry Division elements grind slowly northward in the central sector above Wanju, on the heels of communist rear guard units. The purpose of Operation Killer is identical with that of the UN's limited offensive of the preceding month. General Ridgway again emphasizes that enemy casualties are his main objective. C-119s of the Combat Cargo Command deliver artillery ammo to the 1st Cavalry in the Central Mountain sector, where the only troublesome red resistance is encountered. The load is ejected in a compact cluster, resulting in minimum spread on the drop zone. With road traffic mired, Airlift operations again pay off to the advantage of our forces. Nose fuses are screwed into place at an artillery forward position in the Korean hills. Powder increments are unpacked, ready for immediate use. The chain of supply ends as armored artillery batteries fire outgoing rounds at enemy held points in the wooded hills. Here, white phosphorus shells pound communist positions. Air bursts hurl metal fragments into the enemy emplacements. Since the Korean War began, the UN forces' close and plentiful artillery support has helped greatly to neutralize the large numerical superiority of the Reds. And here, Artillery again softens communist defenses, clearing the way for the renewed Allied offensive. United Nations air power continues its around-the-clock pounding of men and materiel. Merciless attrition and interdiction sorties prevent the communists from consolidating in any large buildup of forces.
During the period 5 to 12 March, the United Nations attrition offensive moved steadily ahead in the Yangpyong area north of the Han River. Across muddy and snow-streaked fields, troops of the 24th Division carry the battle to the enemy, with a heavy strike at strong communist forces entrenched on the western foothills of Korea's central mountains. Heavy armor of the United Nations moves up in close support of the 24th Division riflemen. The 8th Army's numerically superior armor enables them to supply Allied foot soldiers with maximum support. These tanks, playing on the superstitious nature of the enemy, are painted with the markings of the Tiger. Intensified armor-supported attacks of this kind are rolling back the red aggressors along most of the front and are preventing them from initiating any offensive action of their own. Assault troops advance to the objective through dense underbrush, where the Reds still hold out despite the heavy artillery pounding. The attack moves to the crest of the hill, and grenades are used to blast the remaining defenders from their deep holes and caves, which enable them to weather the pre-attack pounding. As our advance forces secure the heights, reserve units entrench themselves in the valley to consolidate the gains. Three midweek Chinese counterattacks are turned back by the 24th Division here in the area of the Pukan River as the Reds attempt to outflank the 25th Division salient to the west. Other groups take time out for food and rest before resuming the attack against Red strong points established on the adjacent hills. In preparation for the present assault, a forward mortar position is excavated in the frozen ground halfway up the hill. The mortar is emplaced in this advanced location where it will be able to fire upon the enemy held high ground. The sights are aligned and the 60 millimeter begins its explosive attack. Coilless rifle is brought into action against the stubborn resistance. A machine gun lends its firepower as the advance gets fully underway. A Chinese prisoner is brought in for questioning after the position is taken in a hard but surprisingly short fight. The PW is uncertain of what treatment to expect and anticipating the worst, he warily eyes his captors as they execute only a thorough search. On 7 March, assault troops of the U.S. 25th Infantry Division advanced to the Han River 15 miles east of Seoul. Elements of the 27th Regiment take time out for food before resuming the advance. Because of its frequent use in emergency action, this regiment has come to be known as the Fire Brigade. On the south bank of the Han, an engineer bulldozer clears an approach for a floating bridge to be erected across the river. This bridge will accommodate the medium tanks and other heavy vehicles. The 25th Division crossing begins early. The craft were brought up from the rear during the long period of waiting since the United Nations troops first reached the Han early last month. Elements of this crossing encounter little or no enemy resistance. Men of a heavy mortar squad prepare breakfast but remain constantly on the alert. The call comes. The command to fire is given and the crew swings into action. A 
A tank adds its lethal punch. troops examine a deserted Chinese gun emplacement in the path of the advance. A causeway for a footbridge across the Han is constructed. Ducks are brought up to accommodate a greater number of troops in the crossing. Later, they do double duty by bringing back Chinese prisoners. A short two hours after the initial crossing, its engineers are well along in their construction of a footbridge. This bridge will provide additional means of crossing for larger groups of infantrymen. engineers have taken unexpected plunges into the cold water of the river, and men in an assault boat go to their rescue. The accident doesn't seem to dampen the spirits of either man, and soon the footbridge is completed and in operation. By late afternoon, the entire 25th Division is across the river, and the day's objective is secured. The bridgehead is continually expanded, and by week's end, patrols are engaged in probing action seven and a half miles north of the Han. By mid-March, the renewed United Nations offensive is rolling steadily forward, nearing the 38th parallel. Members of a 7th Division reconnaissance patrol strike northward through land from which the communist forces have been withdrawing rapidly, but in good order. The tank-reinforced patrol finds little opposition from the retreating Reds. Communist resistance, which had previously been stubborn at many key points, now seems to have collapsed in most areas. However, their withdrawal route is studded with anti-tank mines and booby traps. Mine detectors sweep the narrow roads. Engineers repair a road dynamited by the retreating Reds. The collapse of communist resistance below the parallel seems to indicate that the Reds hope to prepare their spring offensive in North Korea, unmolested by UN ground attacks. The blasted area is quickly restored and the patrol continues toward the boundary line. Enemy casualties are low as the communists, pulling back mostly at night, carry out their retreat according to careful plan. In its dash toward the parallel, the patrol passes through many gutted villages, visual testimony of the toll of war. One tank wallows in a stream, disabled by an enemy mine cleverly placed at the stream ford. Although time is precious, an attempt is made to tow the disabled tank from the water. Operating on a strict schedule, the patrol is attempting to reach the 38th parallel and return during the daylight hours. The tank bogs down in midstream and has to be abandoned. Loose equipment and removable armament are quickly stripped from the derelict tank. Near the parallel, red rear guard positions are raked with 50 caliber fire. short of their objective, the patrol finds a demolished bridge blocking further advance and heads back to report on enemy activity and conquer. 